New information now coming to light on the data coding issues affecting our Arizona voter rolls just before a major presidential election. The ABC 15 investigators found a missed opportunity where these data problems could have been identified and fixed years ago. It's been six weeks since Arizona Secretary of State Adrian Fontes admitted our voter registration system had a problem. This isn't a, a comfortable position to be in by any stretch, neither for us nor for Arizona's voters. Days earlier, Maricopa County recorder Stephen Richer was alerted a non-citizen was a registered voter due to miscoding in the Motor Vehicle Division's driver's license database that affected the electronic voter roll. Turns out an estimated 218,000 people, 5% of all Arizona voters, were marked as citizens, even though they may not have provided proof, proof that's been required for the last two decades under Prop 200. The fact that it didn't come to light earlier um, baffles me a bit. Ken Bennett is a former that, Arizona Secretary of State. But it never came to our attention that any county had found someone who was registered that wasn't supposed to be. Nothing ever came up between 2009 and 2015 while I was secretary. Because for you, that would have raised a big red flag, right? Well, it would have raised the same big red flag that it raised this time. After Bennett left office, the issue did come to light at least once. In 2016 in Maricopa County, ABC 15 even reported on it, the case of Alan Fagenblatt. I didn't want to get in trouble. I still don't want to get in trouble. We initially agreed to protect his identity, but his name became public when he was criminally charged for lying on his voter registration form. He only had a green card, but checked this box saying he was a citizen on the Service Arizona website while providing his real name and driver's license number. He said he never had planned to vote. He just wanted to show that ineligible voters like him could get on the rolls. You know, you got all these politicians. They've been in politics for many, 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 many years, and nobody figured this out. Back then, Maricopa County recorder Helen Purcell said she did not think this could lead to widespread voter fraud. I think that we check it thoroughly enough that that is not the case. Purcell's office blamed the Fagan Black case on an MVD information loophole. Eight years later, the same loophole was discovered again with a new voter by recorder Stephen Richer. So I asked MVD, why didn't they fix the flaw back in 2016? A spokesperson wrote me that it was allowed due to how the system historically operated based on a decades-old policy. This is that policy that told MVD how to implement a 1996 law, which required people to provide proof of authorized presence in the U.S., like a passport, visa, or birth certificate, if they were applying for a first-time driver's license or state ID. Then, in 2004, election law changed under Prop 200, saying driver's licenses and IDs issued after that 1996 law took effect could serve as proof of citizenship when registering to vote for the first time. These two laws did not mesh perfectly, but election officials trusted the data that they were getting from MVD would confirm two things. First, if someone had confirmed proof of citizenship, and second, they had a driver's license or ID issued after 1996. MVD now tells us the data had the following loopholes. All pre-1996 driver's license holders were also coded as citizens, even though some were not. And MVD coding did not necessarily show the original license issue date. So people could have been coded as a post-1996 license if they ever had a duplicate renewal or reinstatement. MVD says the data flaws have been fixed in the last few weeks. We've had for 20 years Republican and Democratic governors and secretaries of state and county recorders, they're all had a hand in this and no one caught it. We talked to Corey Langhofer and other election attorneys who've worked on lawsuits over Arizona's proof of citizenship laws. While they also say they didn't know about the data coding issues until now, they do say many checks of voter credentials over the years through multiple investigations have rarely turned up unauthorized voters. There was no evidence presented in any of the cases that we have like large numbers or any numbers of non-citizens who are voting in our elections. Our shared expert on the plaintiff side found that there were errors at times. However, federal district court found that the system overall was reliable. 
The miscoded voters have not been named, and the Arizona Supreme Court has ruled that they can vote as normal on November 5th. Officials are still working on a plan to fix the voter rolls after the election. I'm senior investigator Melissa Blasius, ABC 15, Arizona.